Hello? How are you going? How's your foot? There you go. Let's have the foot irrigated. Yes? That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Hmm? And your travelling companion gets to have a feed as well. Isn't that right? Hmm? Isn't that right? Yeah, well, you get that, don't you? Don't worry. I'm, I'm actually kind of in the middle of making a video, so I hope you've really enjoyed your cameo, both of you. But the fact is, I have to get back to the video, otherwise I'm going to run out of time. Okay? Yes? Hmm, life's like that. Okay, Dizzy. Okay, Sniffer. Obi-Wan Kenobi moving right along with part two of the last of the fun wars, one crowded hour, the biography of Neil Davis. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Letter to Aunt Lillian, 22nd of March, 1964, Aurora Hotel, Kuching. I work under an entirely different system than I ever have before but it seems to work well, and I definitely prefer it. Viz News evidently has great faith in their cameraman. I get a set salary, bracket, plus allowances and certain expenses like travelling costs, close bracket, but no overtime whatever, which is reasonable, as no doubt you'll agree that it would be hard to determine what time should be paid when one is in the depths of the Borneo jungle. To get here, I merely received an instruction from London which said, quote, proceed to Borneo, unquote. Everything else is left to me. Where I go, how I travel, how long I stay, what film I take, how many films I shoot, and what time, bracket, if any, close bracket, I have off. I have worked very hard here. It is generally accepted that you work hard while away and do virtually nothing in Singapore. There is little work there, anyway. I'm up early in the morning, wherever I am, as it is necessary to get an early start if you are to get anywhere that day. A great deal of time is taken up in meeting people and getting them on your side. This is perhaps the most important thing, as without their cooperation it would be impossible to work effectively. The armed forces, police officials, government officials, tribal chiefs, hotel receptionists and telephonists, the people in the various cable offices, customs and immigration people, and especially the officials of the local airlines. This is extremely important to ensure quick dispatch and delivery of film, as well as being a great help in getting seats on aircraft. And of course, this is the redoubtable Aunt Lillian. 18, Aunt Lillian Davis, 1891 to 1973, who helped bring Neil Davis up after the death of his mother, and who remained in close touch with him through every correspondence during the Indochina War. Left, the redoubtable Granny Mavis, Mary Davis, Nee Crocker, aged 85. There we have the Davis family at Nala from left, Jeff Davis' father, Bra Barbara, sister, Marjorie, mother, Jimmy, elder brother, Daryl, brother, and in front, Neil, tiny Davis. Filming also relies to a great extent on who I know and what transport I can get in a hurry. When I complete each individual news item, I do a complete description of every shot I've taken besides giving as much background scripting material as possible. This is quite often done late at night or early in the morning, so I usually end up working 14 to 16 hours a day one way or another. On 4 September 1985, only five days before he died on assignment in the streets of Bangkok, Davis taped further comments on the technique of being a successful correspondent, having long forgotten his letter to Aunt Lillian. 
A journalist must know the background of the story he is covering. If he has to fly suddenly to a country having a coup d'etat, he should be aware of the basic circumstances surrounding the government's fall. If you do have to go in cold, and this does happen, you have to have a game plan. The important thing is first to get to the people who can help you immediately. Always carry a guidebook to Southeast Asia. It's marvellous what you can pick up about a country, climate, population, political affiliations and short and long term history. There will be important practical information like whether the power system is alternating or direct current and whether they have an automatic telephone system. As soon as you land, start you start talking to people. Taxi drivers can give you succinct comments and background on the situation. So can the guy who carries your bags at the airport, the room boy at the hotel and the waiters or people at your table in the restaurant. Then of course you talk to the diplomats, local politicians and the army people, if that is relevant. It is always useful to get down to the bars because nobody knows the local situation better than bar girls, bartenders or street hawkers. Everyone can give you information. You don't need to walk around unenlightened and ill-informed because everyone you meet can make a contribution. In Borneo in March 1964, Davis was confident that he had the training and ability to handle his wide-ranging international assignments, <clears throat> but it was nice to be reassured. Letter to Aunt Lillian, 22nd of March 1964, Aurora Hotel, Kuching. Received a telegram from London yesterday which said, congrats, all items widest possible syndication, which means to about 70 countries. It was pleasing to get this, as it was a little worrying not quite knowing how the film was going to stand up on an international basis. Davis returned to Singapore towards the end of March, and in the next few weeks covered assignments in the Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, South Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. It was to be a familiar circuit and would fill 21 Australian passports with his visas, about one passport a year. Before heading off to Manila and Saigon to cover a visit by the then US Secretary of State, Dean Rusk, Davis submitted his Borneo expenses to the unpredictable Ted Shaw. Ted was not over fond of paperwork, but like many an administrator in a similar situation, he accepted the major claims but homed in on anything that looked a little out of place. Neil's expenses were usually models of accuracy and propriety, but these were early days and he had slipped. Tim held up an entertainment re receipt from a Kuching nightclub which simply stated, Rosette, $25. What's this Rosette business then? He asked belligerently. Rosette was, in fact, the name of the dance hostess who had been assigned to Neil for the evening. Standard practice in many Southeast Asian establishments. In Singapore and Malaysia, the girls were called taxi dancers and were hired by the hour. Neil thought quickly. You know, Ted, he said, the French wine, Rosette. Ted knew everything. Of course I bloody well know, he said, but why didn't you buy Algerian? It's cheaper. Obi-Wan Kenobi, I could of course go on to the land of the one million elephants, but that's not actually where I want to be taking this um, partial book reading. So here endeth part two of The Last of the Fun Wars. Book reading of Neil Davis, biography by Tim Bowden, published by the Australian Broadcasting Commission. Via imprint.